Thank you. Yes, Mr. Royce. Commissioner, I call Councillor Thomas Tate. <laughs> Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Zillman. Uh, Zillman is my name, and she's rest W, instructed by McGuinness and Associates, and I appear for the Thank you. Mr. Tate, uh, do you have any objection to taking an oath? Oh, no, no, no. Bible, yeah. Yep, thank you. The evidence which I shall give, which I shall give in, these proceedings, in these proceedings shall be the truth, shall be the, truth the, whole truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So, help so help me God. Thank you. Is your name Thomas Richard Tate? Yes, it is. Uh, Mr. Tate, you're the uh, current uh, Mayor of Gold Coast City Council? Yes, I am. Uh, you were first uh, elected uh, to that position in 2012. That's correct. And then re-elected in 2016. Yes, I am. You're appearing today in, <coughs> in response to a notice to attend. Yes. Can I show you this document firstly? Yes. Is that a copy of your attendance notice? It is. I'll tend to that, Commissioner. Exhibit 81. Mr. Tate, uh, are you a, a member of the um, Liberal National Party? Yes, I am. In fact, you're a life member, is that correct? That's correct. Um, I've asked you about the 2012 and 2016 elections, but in fact you first contested the mayoralty for the Gold Coast in 2008. Is that correct? That's correct. In, in what circumstances did that come about, can you tell us? I was approached at the time with the Liberal Party. Mm. Uh, so that was before the amalgamation. And uh, I was asked if I was interested uh, to run um, as a Liberal mayoral candidate. And, uh, and I didn't respond uh, for quite some months. I actually um, took time to go to the Rugby World Cup. And, uh, and by the time I got back, had another meeting, and, uh, and I asked a lot of questions about the polling and things like that, about party politics on the Gold Coast. And, uh, and I was convinced that uh, conservative um, local government uh, has an opportunity to make the Gold Coast uh, a better place in 08. So did you accept um, uh, nomination uh, endorsed by the Liberal National Party? Yeah, you have to go up and uh, do your speech. And, uh, and they vote on it, and uh, I was um, I was voted on and became the Liberal mayoral candidate for the Gold Coast. Uh, in response to an approach by the party, correct? That's correct. Uh, and in fact, the Liberal National Party was putting together a team of Liberal candidates, is that correct? Yeah, it, it was a Liberal Party only at that time. Uh, this is pre amalgamation and um, and they want to run a uh, full team, uh, all 14 division plus the mayoralty. So were there uh, 14 Liberal Party endorsed candidates running on a ticket? That's correct. Uh, you, you weren't successful on that no, occasion? I was not. Were, were, uh, to what extent was the team of 14 successful? None. None? No. I, you can, uh, well, the electorate uh, people of the Gold Coast uh, voted that uh, they don't want party politics. Is and that? Well, that's the message, so. That was the message you took away? I, absolutely, and um, democracy has spoken, and, uh, and, and I went, well, surprise to me, of course, and uh, so um, the chapter closed at that time with uh, party politics. Well, you mentioned the message that you and perhaps others took away from that experience. Um, does that message still hold true that people of the Gold Coast are not really interested in party politics in local government? I believe so. You think that still holds true? That's correct. Okay. Um, and that's uh, despite the fact the Liberal National Party does pretty well at state and federal level in the Gold Coast? Uh, LNP hold all 10 seats at state level and they hold all five seats at federal level on the Gold Coast. Well, in 2012 and again in 2016, you ran as an independent mayor. Correct? Independent. 
Um, yes. I think you may have even used the expression when you were being interviewed, full-on independent. Yes, because right? even though I nail my colour to the mask and I will not uh, stray away from that, uh, I, my belief is conservative person. You can't just change your, your, your belief system there. But uh, independent is independent from any influence from a party politics. Uh, that is, you put the Gold Coast first, and, uh, and that's what I put to the, the Gold Coast pe people. And, and it is the case? Absolutely. That's your All approach? Right. You can read various media in the previous, uh, in the 2012 uh, part when Premier Newman was uh, Premier, and there's quite a lot of, uh, they call it stoush, but I just call that open debate that I stood up for our city and did not tow the uh, perceived LNP party lines. Do you promote yourself as an independent mayor? I just promote myself as me. I mean, I speak, uh, whether it's in being interviewed or uh, anywhere, I just speak the way I speak. I tell them what's in my heart and my head and don't cloud it. And uh, so if some of the, my beliefs are consistent with um, uh, conservative, um, so be it. But at times it may be consistent with the uh, Labor Party, uh, you know, let's say the transport infrastructure matters. Uh, so we get on well on that part of it. So I, uh, they, I put it to you this way, um, some people try to label me blue tie being conservative. My response is that I'm wear, I wear gold tie for the Gold Coast. Um. I asked you if you uh, promoted yourself as independent. Do, do you do that, for example, on campaign material? Yes, I, I do. Um, so uh, on, I don't refer to uh, any party, LNP or uh, Labor or any other party, so I am an independent. Um, notwithstanding your life membership of the... Liberal National Party? Well, they give you a life membership, and uh, I figured the only way to get out of it is to lose <laughs> your life, so I'll stay there for now, you know. Okay. Um, can I ask you about campaign funding? Um, yes. And take the 2016 campaign to illustrate. Uh, how, how was your campaign funded, Mr Tate? Um, we, well, I... I it fully self-funded by Ruth, my wife Ruth, and, and myself um, out of our own bank account. It's a little bit over $182,000, plus the two entities that we own and operate, uh, probably uh, a few more dollars out of that because it was easier to pay some uh, accounts out of those funds. Um, and we had in kind... Uh, some sandwiches that was prepared, and uh, that's about another fourteen hundred dollars, and uh, and there was a bus rental and a car rental. Apart from that, there's no um, funding from a third party. Do you, do you choose not to fundraise? I I believe that uh, yes, I do, and of course, with uh, the decision is made uh, jointly with your wife, of course, and, and um, it just. It, it makes it easier in, the, in your political life um, because you're not beholden to any donors and, uh, and I will make my decision what's best for the Gold Coast. Is that why you choose not to fundraise or solicit donations to keep yourself free of p potential or even perceived influence? Yes, it is. Okay, and it costs you a lot to drop yeah. that position? Cost is a, a relative term. I mean, the Gold Coast has been good to us with our business, and uh, we own and operate family business there. We were, we were blessed with all that. So when you look at um, the relative costs, um, and for me to be able to uh, be an independent mayor and putting the city first without uh, beholden to anyone, I think it's a, it's a great thing if you can afford it. Does receiving donations um, create a position of difficulty for candidates who, unlike yourself, do receive them, particularly from developers? I, I can't um, speak for other 
candidates and what's in their heads. Um, but uh, for me, uh, we, we budgeted for it, we can afford it, and it's just one less complicated matter to have to deal with. We're not arrogant to go, I don't want uh, help. Uh, when a developer wants to help, I normally said, well, you can uh, come out and hand out for me like the 850 plus volunteers. That's how you can help. Um, did you get assistance of that kind with uh, I th volunteers? I, th I think there's a lot of, we garnish a lot of volunteers that never done uh, handing out uh, how to vote cards uh, before because as I went to various booths, a lot of people came up and said that, uh, you know, this is the first time I ever handed out for anyone. And I never ask what's their background, but uh, the mood is, um, I think, through social media and uh, Facebook and the like, and after serving one term, I think uh, people just went, well, happy to back this guy because of we know his, what he does. Were there some reports after the event of Candidates uh, assisting you by handing out your, or arranging to hand out your head of vote cards. Um, I, there were there were reports there. I mean the, the local media, uh, but I don't. I wouldn't rely on local media on ev for evidence, you know, because mm -hmm. um, uh, something is is uh, I don't know. It's it's third hand. But when a volunteer and the like hands out for me, I'm grateful very grateful and if they decide to hand out for another candidate um, well that's their freedom of choice um, I don't go it's me or no me or, or nobody I, I mean that's a, uh, I wouldn't do that so um, the reports would say you know, that person handed out for both Tom and that other candidate well I wouldn't first up I, I, I didn't arrange it Secondly, is their choice. You had uh, a large number of booths to, um, to cover, about 80, I think, is that right? More than 80. Mm. At, uh, at which your how to vote card needed to be handed out. Correct. How did you get enough volunteers? It's a bit of a trade secret, but uh, oh, okay. I'll share it with you. Um, you know, what you do is that uh, I ran a pretty good high-profile Facebook and I would say a majority of that are people who has been following me on Facebook for the last three, four years. And I put out there that uh, need help. And, uh, and, and they will register and go to... Um, through a campaign manager? Through a, a campaign. We had one person just uh, did the volunteering part. Um, so, uh, so she would coordinate that part of it. Second... Second to that, we, um, we had uh, a lot of good volunteers from the 2012 campaign. And um, so we sent an email out to say, can you help me again? Uh, and I'd say the large majority uh, put up their hand again. Uh, but, you know, in some circumstances I would get people say, look, I would love to help, but we're not in the city at the time because we're doing a cruise or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have a lot of... Um, fallout from previous going uh, well you didn't keep your promise we're not going to hand out for you and and go and f find somebody else I didn't have a lot of that so for us to raise 800 plus volunteers uh, it, it was wonderful to see that support well just getting back to the um, uh, reports of uh, your cards being handed out by others um, you say that was not by arrangement with you. Uh, do you know how that came about? Um, I don't actually, uh, because some new candidates I have never met until the polling day or the uh, or the um, pre-polling, and and yet I've seen some of the volunteers handing my card out, mm -hmm. and I did ask. Like, of course, being uh, uh, during campaigning, you're curious. You know, they're, not in, they're not on your list of volunteers, but they're handing out your how to vote. And uh, what I can recollect, 
regular elect was two two important things. One um, uh, was that one of the other candidates was walking up and down and very arrogant about it, another mayoral candidate, you know, and they didn't like it. So to being an Aussie, to give them the finger, this is the best way to give the finger. You support the other person. And I would say that was uh, at the pre-polling booth, um, a lot of that did happen. So when, when they see our people, um, you know, well-dressed, well-spoken, and polite about it, didn't rush to people, not rude. And they think, well, well, maybe um, the mayoral candidate for that, for that, uh, for Tom is um, he's a good bloke. So that's how I would say. Just to get back to the uh, the, the funding question, um, there's a variety of ways in which campaigns are funded. You're one who funds yourself. Others accept donations. Others fundraise or a combination. Uh, and it can give rise to some problems of perception when donations are received. I think you've referred to that. What, what do you think, then, is the best funding model for local government elections? Oh, self-funding, you see. You think? <laughs> you know. And, not everyone can but, do that. But not everyone can afford it. But, you know, to review that, you know, it, maybe uh, you can cap the, uh, the funding required so it's a lot more affordable. I'm saying for a, uh, a normal candidate, uh, instead of not having a cap at all, cap it down. I'm just taking a figure out of the top of my head, you know, 40,000. Well, you've got a good chance to, to get to 40,000 fundraising or uh, putting your own money in without need any big, big donor, let's say, uh, involved. On the Meralty, well, it's, it's uh, a lot bigger campaign, it's like 14 division. Uh, I'm not saying it's 40 times 14, but from my uh, recollection, happy for it to be capped off at 100,000, whatever it is, so that people who don't whinge about, oh, Tom is spending 200 grand, we're only spending 50, that's why he beat us. That's, that's the, uh, the message that they want to try to put forward. But really, if you look at it, no, you can have the money, but if you don't have the right message and the right heart for the community, you can have all the money you like. If the message is wrong, people are not going to vote for you. Well, you've suggested uh, capping as one option. I, I would say that. Um, that still leaves the question as to how the money under the cap is to be raised. Well... Is, is it better to not accept donations from developers to ban that? I only can speak... For, for me, Mr. Rice, I, I, it's better for me not to uh, ask for a donation. But as, but as a commentary on the system, Mr. As Tate, a commentary on the system, um, uh, would I ban any particular group? Well, then you've got to define a group. No, I, 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 would, I would cap the donation from any group, meaning if you're a big developer or a big union, you know, well, the most you can give that uh, that um, candidate is five grand or whatever it is. So you don't see a, a big union giving 38 grand to a mayoral candidate because one would say, hang on, that's kind of, you know, a bit of beholden to them a bit if somebody just gave you 38 grand, I would have thought, mentally. So it's not just a cap on the, the campaign bit. I would uh, put to you that if we're going ahead with donation still, cap the donation that's, about, that's allowable. And I would say um, a lot of smart people out there, but I would say that uh, I would group them that, you know, you don't go start another business. Any commonality uh, is, for, is, is a cap of five grand, so to, so to speak. Well, donations <coughs> give rise to a need to make a disclosure return, don't they? Yes, they do. And um, under the um, Local Government Electoral Act, the, the timing of that is up to 15 weeks after the election. Yes. Do you think that uh, the timing of lodgement of a return, making that kind of disclosure, serves the electors' interests in knowing who candidates are being funded by before they vote? I would rather um, see um, see the donation. 
I don't want to call it real time because it's a bit hard for the person, but I would say if someone donate, uh, I would say it's not so hard within 48 hours for you to put it up on your website or, or whatever the reporting is so that people know where the money's coming from, not after the game's over. It's a bit like a uh, game of rugby league. You, know, you, you want to know the, uh, the salary cap is complied with right through. Not you won the trophy and, oh, by the way, it did happen, but by the way, we got a few more dollars coming in on, on the side that we didn't tell you about. So I'm saying be up front, um, work out the number of days. If they say 48 hours too hard, okay, make it three days, whatever it is, but have it well in advance so that um, as we go towards campaigning mode and go towards the uh, polling booth, people know for sure where your funding's coming from. Will you, as a sitting councillor, have an obligation, apart from the disclosure return to the Electoral Commission, to keep a uh, register, yes. gift register? Yeah. Um, that's an obligation imposed on sitting councillors, am I right? That's right, yes. Um, a new candidate uh, doesn't make that kind of disclosure? Do you have any no. view about that? Well, that's... Um, well, put it this way, if... If you want to be mayor of a city, why not disclose now, like the current mayor is doing? So you're gonna, if you win, you're gonna have to do it anyway. So you might as well get in the habit of letting people know your um, the, the source of your funds. It's I not a requirement at the moment. Uh, no, it's not. But I'm saying maybe through this hearing recommendation, uh, state government, maybe they can tweak the law and. Uh, and make it more transparent. Is that something you would favour? Absolutely, I would. Because I'm doing it now. Yeah. Um, one of the uh, forms of complaints that came in after the last election was us about undeclared voting blocks, um, and I think the sharing of how to handing out how to vote card resources perhaps fueled that a little bit. And, um, can I ask you this? Did, did you go out to assist anyone else's campaign? No. D did you, in fact, assist anyone else's campaign? No. Well, were there, are there any voting blocks in, in council that you've observed? You know, I was concentrating on my campaign. Mm. So um, if my competitor, other mayoral candidates, got other help or other blocks, well, that's up to people to judge. So I didn't go out of my way to find out if there's a, uh, what they call it, um, a group? Um, group or um, uh, similar interests, political interests. Well, they call it group. And so I don't think, I don't believe there was a group ran on the city of the Gold Coast, to my knowledge. One common feature of a number of candidates was the use of uh, Shack Communications. And you, in fact, used uh, Shack Communications for your campaign, did you not? Yes, I did. Uh, you know Simone Holzerfeld? Yes, I do. Um, for how long have you known her, Mr Tate? Oh, eight. She assisted you with that campaign? Yes, she did. And each campaign since? Yes, she did. Uh, were you aware that other candidates for the 2016 campaign used the services of her business? Not firsthand. Um, I read uh, read about in the local paper um, that somebody uh, has engaged Shack Communications, another candidate. Um, I never raised it with uh, with Simone. That's her business, and uh, I didn't discuss policy. Um, of anyone else, so, and, um, but you know, if other people decide to use Shack Communication, well, good luck to them. Was it by any arrangement with you? Well, no, nobody arranged anything with me. One of the requirements on candidates, Mr Tate, is to 
used for campaign purposes a dedicated bank account. Yes. Y you had a uh, bank account styled as Tom Tate Merrill account, uh, yes. did you? Yes, I did. Um, can I suggest to you that uh, you and you and your wife actually used a Westpac bank account um, for campaign purposes? Yes, we do, and and we use we got NAB as well. I think our Visa card, it's NAB or something. Well, I don't want to go to your banking records unless we need to. Okay. But can I suggest this to you, that there was a Westpac bank in your name and your wife's name, which which was used for a combination of personal banking and your mayoral campaign? That's correct. Uh, it shouldn't have happened that way, do you accept? I accept that. How, how could that occur with a campaigner as experienced as you, Mr Tate? Um, well, when, when I looked at the intent of the law, I'm not a lawyer, as you know, um, it's about transparency and, um, and if you can deliver that in your disclosure statement, I believe we did 100%. People know uh, if there's any third party um, payments. The mayoral account was set up so that if there's a third party uh, money coming in, it's to go in there and people can see the expenditure out of that account from the donation. On our personal account, uh, my view is that um, Ruth and I are not the third party, so uh, to move the money in there into the mayoral account and expend it out of there was, um, it didn't serve any additional transparency in my opinion. But, but I know that now and, uh, and I, I'll take it as read that, uh, that you know, in future campaign, I would do it differently. But, but, but would you would not have been aware of, of the requirement to maintain a dedicated uh, campaign bank account? I, I mean, the fact that you had a, a mayoral account suggests that you were. Yeah, I, I read the uh, candidate's guideline and um, I went through that and it was silent on the matter, on the candidate's guideline. So as a, as a candidate, we're off and running. We've got an account, if donation comes in, we use the money for the campaign. Meanwhile, um, when we're spending our own money, um, we kept uh, a clear record and, uh, and, and, and so that when it comes to disclosure, we can do it um, transparently. But, but I'm sorry, Mr. Tate, were, were you not aware that there should have been a dedicated campaign account? And that's a requirement not, of the Act? Yeah, I, I, at that time, uh, not until uh, I read later on the disclosure guideline, which is post the election, mm -hmm. you don't have to disclose um, X number of weeks after. Mm -hmm. And that's when the time that, uh, that I went, well, we should have uh, operated one account. Yep. even though it's your own money. Yep. So it's a very unique set of circumstances. But I acknowledge, Mr Rice, that uh, it's a better way of doing it, or the correct way of doing it. Well, it's the lawful way of doing it, isn't it? Okay, I agree. Mm. Right, anything else? It's Mr Tate's evidence, Commissioner. Thanks, Mr Rice. Mr Zillman, do you have anything? I have nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tate. Thanks for coming. You're excused. Thank you. Those are the witnesses uh, I understand scheduled for the day, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, who do we have uh, for tomorrow? Do you know yet? Uh, Mr. Sharpless. Uh, correction, Mr. Comiskey, I think, is first. Mr. Sharpless and Mr. Hallam from the... Um, Local Government Association. I think from memory Mr Hallam uh, is not before two o'clock or? Same I think for Mr Sharpless. Mr Comiskey will be uh, earlier in the day. Okay so we'll do Mr um, firstly and then Mr uh, the other two in the afternoon. Yes. All right thank you. We'll adjourn now until 10am um, tomorrow. All stand.